Hi, and welcome to STEM Stories with Mr. Ewing. So, this is episode or installment number nine on a magical unicorn year and understanding, embracing, and doing virtual learning. So, we're going to talk about pulling it all together. First, is understanding that we're working with a bunch of learners that already exist in this world. So, it's our job to embrace it, integrate it, and make it better. So, let's talk about what that looks like. So. Are you making unicorn lessons? Are you creating stuff that you're super proud of that you would actually do within your brick and mortar classroom on a virtual? They shouldn't be any different, but they should be super engaging and fun. Make sure that you are redefining what a classroom actually is and understanding that and embracing it. Be authentic, be your authentic voice. Find your platform, whether it's Prezi like I use or whatever video platform you wanna use, but use it, engage it, and be it. Um, make sure you're creating uh, opportunities for discourse. And I think I actually spelled that incorrectly. Um, remember to teach about the brain and make sure you're integrating breaks and play into your day. Are you providing experiences that you would use in your classroom? I think that's the most important key element to what we're putting out there. If you're putting out just a whole bunch of docs that are basically digital worksheets that you would never use in your classroom, don't do it. Don't do it. Just don't stop, please. Don't put out stuff there that you're not super proud of and impressed with. And if you're not sure, create a student account and log into your classroom and be a student in your classroom and see what the experience is actually like. I think that's the most important thing. Does your virtual learning space feel inviting, engaging, inspiring, innovative, or is it just a factory? Is it just a flat factory? that might as well be a workbook that you've sent home. Make sure that we're not doing the factory piece anymore. Don't do it. Also, are you providing space for your students to take risks, whether it be in a virtual discourse? Is it putting your work out there to be you know, seen by other students? Are our students actually commenting on other students' work? Are you allowing your students to take risks and making students understand that Failure is good, that we grow from failure, so failure is not a bad thing, and to take the risk, and if we fail, all we do is learn from it and do something better. Um, the engineering or design process, one of my favorite things. Um, are, are we providing opportunities for our students to feel self-fulfillment? You know, are we giving them ownership of this learning? Are we inviting them to actually be teachers for some of the stuff we're doing? You know, find out from your students what they need individually. Put a survey out, you know, talk to them. Actually really talk to your students and find out what they need. You might find that you have three separate classes going on of different learners and learners that wanna to be together. And that, are you providing time for emotional engagement? Are you providing that environment for students to play, socialize, interact with each other outside of that, that learning time? Because there's actually more learning that happens there than with some of the content we deliver. And again, I cannot emphasize enough. Find your voice. Be authentic, not fake. Our students read through us the minute we are doing something fake. Now, if you're gonna try something on new, if you're gonna to try to be the funny teacher, tell your students that's what you're gonna do and ask for their feedback. Model what it looks like to take a risk. It's really important. Now think about your virtual learning environment as an extension of your classroom. That's all it is. It's part of your classroom. It's just different. You know, we're in a different mode of education right now. So we need to embrace it just like we ask our students to. Embrace the change. You know, be part of the change. Be part of this explosion of education that's happening right now. And think about it as just another learning tool that it could be used in your classroom once we go back 100% to the brick and mortar. But least of all, have fun. Like, you are also a learner during all this. We need to be having fun. You need to be having fun. Your scholars need to be having fun. And if you are willing to take the risks, it may not feel fun in the beginning, but once it falls into place, let me tell you, it can be a blast. You can be having more fun than your students. I'm actually kind of having a blast doing this. I'm, I've told many people this, I'm probably one of the few people that has completely embraced virtual learning because I'm producing right now some of the best stuff I've ever built in my career. 
And that's because the first few weeks of this back in the spring, I was depressed. I was miserable. I was putting stuff out there that I was embarrassed as an educator to do. And I was crumbling. But it took that moment to go through to get to where I am now. So yeah, it's messy and sticky and it can be hard and it's scary and all those things. But you know what? It's what we do as educators, isn't it? Isn't our job to embrace what we're handed and make it better? We do it every year with a brand new class, a new building, whatever we go through as educators, we do this every year. It's just a little different this time. It's not really any different than what we've done before. The outcome's kind of looking a little different, but embrace it, take those risks. Be that amazing educator that you are, that you know you are, and if you're afraid, you know what? Yeah, so am I, every day. I get, I'm afraid, I'm scared. Some days are not so much, some days more. Some days I'm overjoyed, elated. And some days I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, welcome to teaching. Welcome to being an amazing educator and embrace it.